Hey there everybody, Pop on Top here. Welcome back to some more Fallout New Vegas. We are back in the Mojave. We finished the Old World Blues DLC last time. Even though we do have a bunch of Old World Blues kit currently equipped with my character here. We got this lair, um, Elijah's Advanced Lair to be specific. It's already in bad condition. Um, it is what it is. We got our little Halo, our Super Halo thing. We got some perks from that. Obviously we leveled up a bunch, we got level 29, but we also have all the cool implants and stuff. Specifically from that DLC. Um, we do more damage to Cazadors. We are faster while crouch movement speed. We showed that off at the end of the last episode, but it is very fast. We are very sneaky and very quick while being sneaky. So, back in the Mojave. I don't know if I'm even doing the Dead Money DLC, you guys. You guys have to let me know in the comments if you want me to do the Dead Money DLC. I fucking hate it, okay? This this Sierra Madre Grand opening. I will do it if, if people want me to, but otherwise you can just not do it. Um, last time, well, not last time, but way, way, way back before we went to the Old Will Blues DLC, we had this Isa to the Blind Quest the Brotherhood of Steel wanted us to head to Black Mountain, which is a big, nasty, super sketchy, don't like spot. Let's see, what is my carry weight like? Is it good? I'm good enough, right? Like, um, good enough. <laughs> it's never good enough. Maximum carry weight. Anyway, we're going to head back into Black Mountain, or back towards Black Mountain. We haven't quite even gotten to Black Mountain, but we are, like I was talking about last time, my things all got all unhot, but I was going to say, I don't, probably don't need to go too hard on these. It's just the god dang scorpions again. God dang bark scorpion. I did not believe I could get it. Whatever. That's what we got this little gun for. I mean, it's just big, big blast of energy. It's kind of a cool vibe. Um, yeah, but look how fast we move with this gun out though, right? Like, if we just put it away, we're, we're, we're really cruising. So we're going to sneak into Black Mountain today. There's a couple things at Black Mountain. Obviously, the Brotherhood wants us to do something there. The silly thing about it is, kind of, to a certain degree, is that the Brotherhood, you know, we're doing quests with the Brotherhood, we're working with them, we're doing all this stuff. But at the same time, they also asked us to, I mean, we dealt with some Brotherhood. He's so hard to name. See, I don't know... Critical hits made the enemies explode. Um, we did kind of hurt ourselves a little bit there. But yeah, we dealt with some Brotherhood stuff in the Old Old Blues DLC. We were dealing with Elijah and the repercussions of his actions while he was there. Christine obviously going after him. We know about all that stuff. And I was talking during the Old Old Blues DLC about how good it is about connecting to all the other DLCs and connecting to the plot of the main game. The main game does not connect to the DLCs very well, though. There's nothing that we did in Old Old Blues. We can come back and be like, look at this cool gun I found over... That no, nobody cares, I guess. Um, a little bit of radiation here. I think we're just gonna, you know, super speed through it. Is the centaurs back? I think so. But I think we're gonna just skip them. If we're careful, look how. I mean, it looks really funny when we're when we're sneak walking like this because it is just excessively quick. Now there should be a gate over here, if I remember correct, that sneaks us into kind of the back way of Black Mountain. Now we'll have to see how this goes. Regardless, anyway. There's a skeleton that I almost literally tripped over. This is a, uh, oh, I thought it was locked. Wasn't it locked? It doesn't not lock. There's like a back way to sneak that's more. We're gonna get- This is a dangerous place, human. Especially for your kind. I suggest you turn back. There's nothing good waiting for you further on. Uh, you seem friendly for a mutant. Keep saying things like that and I won't be so friendly. Not every super mutant is a brain damaged brute. Sorry. Many of Didn't us are as intelligent as basic humans. And the rest don't really have any choice in the matter, do they? Sorry about that. I did not mean any offense. And none taken, since you apologized. Uh, what makes this a dangerous place? You must have heard her radio broadcasts. The why a human would follow her invitation here is beyond me, unless you didn't listen very closely. The voice on the radio belongs to Tabitha, the supreme commander of Black Mountain, or as she calls it, the state of Utopatha. She took control of this place almost two years ago. The super mutants here do whatever she says, and she says humans are to be killed on sight. Nasty, that's why we didn't do it before. Um, but with a speech of 50, sounds like you've had enough of Tabitha. What if you what if you had some help? Help would improve the odds. Uh, crazy, crazy, help crazy. Just make the Another difference. Quest. All right, if you're good enough at what you do to meet me in the village up near the peak, we can talk further. I'll have a plan by the time I see you, if I see you. Good luck. It's gonna be a lot harder for you to get up there than it will be for me. I'm not that worried about it. Um, that's part of the reason we went to the Old Blues DLC, got all those level up, did all those things, is that we can, I believe, I hope, handle this. Because it's super mutants, and super mutants, 
like you deal with in Fallout 3 and Fallout 4, and they're, they're tough enemies for sure, but they are not Fallout New Vegas level super mutants, okay? We have discovered Black Mountain as a location. There's rocks coming right down there. There is some super mutants right over there. I hit the wrong button. Used to follow four. This guy's got a heavy incinerator though. That is a little bit unpleasant. It's a super mutant master. The thing is about getting high level is that we have made the super mutants higher level. Now that's a sneak attack critical. We are very sneaky. Maximum sneak. 100 sneak. Now the other guy didn't even notice we were there. So either, we are fine. I was I would not have been able to handle this I think as well before, but now I think I can. Now where's this last red pip at? Obviously I'm spamming the vats button. I am nervous about it. I've explained this before, but I am the glass cannon run. Heavy incinerator is technically an energy weapon, right? Because it's a flamer. I don't know if I want to take it. I guess we can take it for now, and if we decide to drop it later, we can do that. Where'd that guy go that I dusted? He had a super sledge. That wasn't gonna do him any good anyway. Okay. We're okay. I mean, there's more super down the hill. We don't need to go down the hill for any reason. Uh, we're just going to keep going along here. We should be okay. We should be. Should is the key word there. Should be okay. Hopefully we are okay. Right? Like, that would be ideal. Um, but we have maximum sneak. And we have the lair, right? Which is a very good laser weapon. Should be okay. There's going to be some radiation here. Does it start now? I thought it started a little later than this. Like, before it started getting real bad. I guess we popped the radix now. We got plopped with plenty of it, right? Right? Game? Life? Yeah, 29 is funny. We'll pop some rad eggs. Just, I mean, it's still, we're still gonna be eating rads, just not nearly as much. Which is beneficial. We're gonna follow the road and kinda go around here. You can kinda try to cheat it. There's a super unit up here. Two of them. I guess we'll just go with that for now. One shot in the head is very good. Let's see if the other one notices. How quickly they notice. Enough to, that they're going to probably attack me, but they, that one looks like I had a hammer. I got lucked out on that. Okay, we're doing just fine. Super mutants that, like, I promise you they're bad. Like, if you try to come here too low a level, like, they do get harder the higher level you are, but it is a deal of, like, you just don't really want to fuck with them. They, they will kill you. I wonder what this fast travel point is out here. There's like a... I want to make sure I can get back up, like, but... That's Vegas right over there. So you can kind of use Black Mountain if you're good enough to sneak through and go straight north in the beginning of the game. That's a little tough still. I promise you that. Um, but we're not we're not going to worry about it. We're doing the Black Mountain quest here. We are helping out the Brotherhood of Steel with this. Obviously, there's the crazy, crazy, crazy quest. we got to deal with Tabitha. Um, we promised the friendly super mutant that we would help him if he would help us, which is positive. I'm almost sneaking too fast. I feel like I'm like running. I'm like going to run into something on accident. It's fine. Creepy, creepy, crawling along. The rads are here. It's just, we're just gonna eat the fact that that's a thing. Right? Like, it is extremely rated up here, which I'll probably let means like the, this particular crater, probably where a nuke hit or something, some kind of bomb hit, right? It's a big crater and it's obviously very irradiated, which would imply that it was nuke. And you have to remember that the fallen lore nukes are not as big as, you know, real life nukes are. So. A new could have hit there. I mean, obviously, Black Mountain here. The Super Mutant Master. They fried. Yeah, just kind of too good, man. That Dust Pal literally jumped in the air. And we are getting our health regeneration automatically on the go, too. Which is pretty good. Because we're already, already almost fully healed up. I don't need those frag grenades or your Super Sledge. Super Sledges are valuable. Right? They are. That's true. Trunk here? I think it's got caps in it. Which is weird, but... Yeah, 450 bottle caps. It's a decent chunk. It's not like a huge amount, but it is a decent chunk. Okay. Keep on crawling. Crawl out through the fallout back to me. Anyway. That's not a copyright thing, YouTube. You can't copyright me for that. I don't know exactly remember where my friendly super mutant homie went. But we're about to approach... I mean, this is this is this quick. Right? The, really, the blockade here. It's not like a long road. Caution already, huh? Oh, Nikan, I fucking forgot. Punk ass, sneaky bitch. Doesn't matter. It doesn't, I mean, it does matter. If there was two of them, we'd be in a really bad spot. But because there's one, we're okay. It's another one. It's okay also. I vaguely saw it last second. And the fact that I could vast it did help a lot. They have bumper swords now, though. Bumper sword is also a really great, like, probably one of the best, if not the best. 
two-handed, like, melee-style weapon in the game. Big, heavy, fucking swing, hit it hard type of fucking shit. Now, there's a sniper up here. The Nightkin sniper uses a goddamn rocket launcher of all the things. But he is dead, so... You don't have to worry about that. Also, it's a unique rocket launcher. We're, we're gonna make sure, that's why I wanted to make sure I had enough room in my inventory to pick that up. I guess we didn't ever mark Crazy 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 as a quest, right? So, like, meet Neil in the village. He's down here. <laughs> Neil, I already cleared it out, I think. I think. Let's crouch it out. Um, yeah, I forgot. I forgot to meet Neil, the friendly super mutant, so he can help me out. <laughs> I mean, I didn't need his help. I mean, obviously, he probably would have just made a bunch of noise. I forgot where he was at, right? Like, you not here? It says, like, right here. Like, here? He's not here. Cannot wait while being irradiated. Yeah, that makes sense. Alright, because you would just stack rad over time. Neil, you're not here. Did you not make it? I mean, there's enemies there. I just fuck it, dude. Neil, you can you can just not help, okay? I clearly got this. Like I was talking about at the end of last episode, after that old Wood Bleal CLC, especially because we're an energy weapons build, we're kind of, like, I'm looking at, I'm walking this speed, I walk this speed. Ooh, there's a Nightkin right there, you see it? I don't know if you guys can see it. Impression being what it is. Taken care of. What did he have there? Does that look like a light machine gun? Or what the, the New Vegas refers to as a light machine gun? Fucking layer too good. It is like cheating. Yeah, you got a light machine gun of all the guns. That's kind of nuts. There's Annabelle. That is the unique rocket launcher. We're not going to use rockets? I don't know what rockets count as as a weapon. I guess explosives. So maybe we could eventually get explosives up there and use rockets, our missiles. We kind of sold all our missiles already. We're taking this just to say we did. It is a cool, it's a cool gun. Very cool. I promise you it is cool, but not that worried about it. So, really, we're here for multiple things. Missiles. I mean, there's some missiles. We can at least shoot it if we needed to. We're here for multiple things, okay? So, obviously we have to deal with crazy, 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 but we have to also just get in here and do the brotherhood thing which is what I'm more concerned with now if I remember right there's a certain way I want to do this this is the broadcast building so I want to go in this one first I think if I remember right I have to try to remember storage building yeah I think this is the one I need to be in here very creepy um, yeah because there's this robot in here this mr. handy and it was a sign. Oh, the robot lies and on the table, giving no indication of having worked recently or ever. A nameplate on the surface is scratched and mostly faded, but you can still make out a faint word Rhonda. Check the robot circuitry. Science. You quickly ascertain the robot's current AI state is set to hibernate, likely a self defense mechanism after the unit suffered catastrophic damage. However, repaired. Whoever repaired it probably didn't know how to reset its AI. I have to click the right switch, the robot jumps to life. Hello. Could you please direct me to Mistress Tabitha? Sure, follow me. Thank you very much. My eternal clock says it's been six years, 52 days, 40 minutes, and 13 seconds since I last spoke to her. I hope she hasn't gotten lonely. She's gone absolutely fucking crazy. But, um, Rhonda here is kind of the companion of Tabitha, if you want to think about it that way. And because we reactivated her, we should be in a position where Tabitha will not... There's a Nuka-Cola victory. Rare Nuka-Cola is always good. There is some, like, all kinds of bullshit items in this fucking little building here. Um... Bottle caps? Is any of these star bottle caps? Eventually, I'm gonna have to figure that out too. We are gonna do, you know, Legend of the Star. We will get to it anyway. The cone on the head. Super Mutants do weird stuff. There's a baseball bat on the ground, more broken goddamn gnomes. Oh, that trunk requires a key. I do want, I think, what's in there. You can follow me, okay? I'm, I'll bring you to your Mistress Tabitha. Alright, this also requires a key. We'll come back to this then. Rhonda? Is that you? It is, Mistress Tabitha. How I've missed you so. This stranger here fixed me up right as rain. Is she a friend of yours? I am now. I don't know how to thank you for bringing Rhonda back to me, stranger. Here, take this. I won't be needing it anymore. What will you do now? I don't know. It's been so long since I lost Rhonda that I'm not sure. Mistress Tabitha, we should be That's the quest complete. That's 990 XP. Crazy, crazy, crazy. So Tabitha's just crazy. I mean, that can are crazy. Super mutants are kind of crazy if you want to think about it like that, too. In to, to terms of... I mean, we gained karma for that because they're such a good person. Um, but Tabitha really just misses her companion. You know? A partner for life. And um, 
Once we have fixed her, her companion, um, she doesn't really feel like doing all this crazy people shit no more. Now, I believe we got her key. We could open these, yep. Just some ammo. I mean, we'll take the ammo. I thought it was more... I, I remember it being more valuable than that, but you know. Oh, there's a bunch of 357 magnums. <laughs> 357 revolvers. Yeah, we'll just slap those into each other. There we go. I mean, that's not even that valuable, but we'll take it just to say we did. Um... Yeah, we have some more stuff to do here, obviously. So, we completed that. We have to go out here. We have to do what the Brotherhood wanted us to do, which is, like, to put their little signal majigger on here. Yeah, the signal majigger. That's what we're going to call it. Is it in this building? I'm pretty sure it is, if I remember right. All right, now it's back out. I don't know. But we have, we have some other things here to do as well. One other thing to do here, anyway. Is it here? I forget where it is. Easy lock terminal. That's not really what I'm concerned with here. I guess it's out this door, right? We go up here. And into here. Oh, that requires a key? Hmm. I forget how to get the key. This must be in here somewhere. We'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. I can look it up too, even though I'm a big dumb bitch sometimes. Like, I... Oh, we... I mean, Black Mountain is, like, as much as the Super Mutants are tough, they are. I don't think there's anything in these terminals worth the shit. Katana. Hey, first guess. I just threw a number. I mean, the higher you get at science, the easier these things are. Um, okay. Nothing important. Like, lower stuff, which is cool. Um, and I guess we're getting a little bit closer to hacking the terminals complete. It's probably just more lower stuff, right? Could it be crafted? Crafted. It could be. Still one in seven. Careful. It cannot be careful. Taunted. Taunted. That's two parties. That's one. Yeah, that's the one. I figured it out, you guys. It just takes a second. I'm just like really impatient. It's my fault, right? Like, these are just logs. Some bullets. I forget how we get the second floor key. She gave us the key. But it's not the key that we need. And we can't just lockpick the door. Did I mess this up? By working with Tabitha? Did I have to kill her? Is that like the conditions? to? They're like watching TV. Or like they were. Like putting things around the TV. And there's a poster of Jesus, I guess. I don't know what the fuck he's doing, man. Um, where do we get the other key? I'm going to look into it real quick, you guys. And I will see you in just a second. I found the key. To be fair, I looked it up. I, I mean, I, you can call it cheating or you want. You have to literally come out here and it's literally underneath the stairs. I forgot that that's there, okay? Like, that's a, that's a really obscure thing. But we, we got the key now. We can go in here. Our second floor. We're in caution? Why are we in caution? What does even put us in caution? I do not want your varmint rifle. What garbage. Um, like at this late stage of the game, what garbage. This is obviously where she was directly broadcasting, so we can interrupt the signal by going to this and install that for the Brotherhood of Steel. You quickly install the device's directed and immediately a small green light on it begins pulsating, or pulsing, not pulsating, that's a different thing, indicating that it has begun transmitting. So we can report to McNamara that the device has been installed. That quest is done. We have one more thing to do here. One more thing to do. I think all the super mutants are dead, though. Uh, if they're not dead, they leave, I think, when Tabitha does. That's thunder. It's, it's a prison. Now, somebody's here in the prison. We're going to use this workbench while we happen to be here, right? Recycle all of our ammo. If we can. Why not? Yeah, there we go. I mean, we got a lot to do. Optimize some ammo. I think a lot of it. We apparently have a lot to still look and do. I mean, like, cause, like, could you imagine, like, I've been to this before, but could you imagine we got literally, I just like to have more ammo. But there's a companion here, it's Raul. Uh, very hard terminal, though. Which is fine, we have maximum science that we can do that. Relationship, one of twelve, god damn. Okay, we're gonna look for the things, cause I'm not, these words are way too fucking long for me to want to do this. The dud removed, we're gonna, I mean, there's a lot of options to be fair. I mean, very hard terminals by my ass. They really do. This is this is not gonna be easy one. It's 
tell you what, it is not. So I'm going to try to find as many duds to remove as I can. Because otherwise, it just might be too difficult. I mean, fuck, this is a hard one. Like, this is a hey science level. It makes my feel, it makes me feel dumb. <laughs> dumb, to be fair. That's really the problem. So broadcasting, I mean, like, it's really hard to go through this long ass word and see. It could be broadcasting. It's not. It can't be recuperating. That's at least out of there. Technologies. Oh my god. No, I sorry, I have to like shut up so I can think. It cannot be technologies. I think. It can't be recuperating immaculate, huh? It's a hell of a word. It is a hell of a word, though. <laughs> Immaculately of all the things. It could be immaculately? Thank God. Oh my God. I fucking hate this. <laughs> I did it, though. Alright, we're going to open this door. We got a nice friend in here. Hello, Raul. Took you long enough, so can I go now? Uh, what do you mean took me long enough? I don't know you. Sorry, I assume the only reason you'd fight past a horde of super mutants and pick the lock on my cell is if you heard my cry for help on the radio. But maybe you're just sightseeing. So since the door's open and all, can I go now? Um, it's okay with me. Enjoy your freedom if you want. Alrighty then. I'll just head out. Alone. By myself. Into the dangerous waste. Yeah, you wanna come with me? Anything's better than staying here. Let's go. So, Raul is a mechanic. Now, will we learn more about Raul's backstory as we do things? He's a ghoul! He's been around since the bombs, right? That's, that's his thing. Um, come here, Raul. Move. So I can see your face a little bit better. He is very ghoulified. Um, we are going to do Raul's quest today. It's supposed to be pretty simple. He's a mechanic, though. He's got a pistol. He looks very cool. He's got a mechanic jumpsuit. He does give you the perk where he can, well, um, he makes it so your weapons degrade less quickly, I think, if I remember right, which is really good for us because obviously we have this layer here that regular maintenance. When Raul is a companion, the condition of weapons and armor decays more slowly. Very good. Because obviously this fucking lair is breaking on us kind of, you know, with a passion. And we have nothing. Well, I guess we have a plasma rifle to we'll throw in there. We throw that plasma rifle in there right now. And now we'll decay less and less. Decay condition less quickly. I can't even speak. Ro, we're going to do your quest. I mean, we'll do Raul's quest first. And then we'll go talk to McNamara later. So, the way that we do Raul's quest is there's three people we got to talk to that's going to make Raul say certain things. Right? Well, first of all, here in Novak. Hello, Novak. It's been a long time. Raul, come on with me. We got an old man to talk to. So now, Raul wants you to talk to old people that still feel like they have value. Uh, Cliff Briscoe, is it? It's not Cliff Briscoe. It's a Ranger Andy. We're going to talk to Ranger Andy here. We haven't met yet. You must be new in town. I mean, Yeah, sure, new in town. Um, What do you do here, Andy? Right now, a whole lot of sitting on my keister and counting cracks in the ceiling. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. On better days, I help keep the peace. Boone and Vargas watch the road. I watch the town. Tell myself I'm doing some good. You're with the NCR, right? Was. Was with them. That was back when my arm and leg used to work better. I still like to pretend I'm a ranger, though. I'll check in with the guys up at the station pretty regular on the ham radio. Sometimes they stop by, tell me they're paying their respects, the smug bastards. They haven't been responding to me last couple days. I guess they got tired of hearing me talk, but it still got me a little worried. Hell, listen to me talk, like some damn mother hen. <laughs> the rangers are soft, they're probably already dead. Let's probably not say that. Would you do feel better if I checked on your NCR friends for you? Uh, no. No, they're gonna think I'm having trouble letting go. They're good soldiers. I don't give them enough credit. That's okay. Um, did you do something to your leg? Yeah, twice. Actually, the first time, it was more like half my body. 
knocked me out of the Rangers. This time, it's mostly just reminded me how useless I've gotten. What happened? A few years back, we get a tip that some Legion slavers were holed up in this burnout house a few clicks from where we were stationed. We get there and it's deserted. No sign anyone's been there. I mean, nothing. As we're leaving, I hear something behind me. I turn around and there's this kid, just skin and bone, and he's looking up at us and he's scared half to death. Been hiding in a closet. What did you do? I go to grab him out of there and I notice he's holding something in his hand. Something metal. He shuts himself back in the closet and that's when I see the grenade he's left by my feet. They do it a lot, the Legion, using kids. They know we'll hesitate. Anyway, that was the first time. Second time, I fell down those stairs in front of the motel. Just in case I got to thinking I'd put it all behind me. That That's pretty nasty, right? So, like, the Legion, who are evil pieces of shit, um, he's the kid who, like, and they told the kid to hold the grenade in their hand. And then as soon as the NCR comes to save them, to, to like, suicide bomb the NCR. Like, and the NCR, this guy hesitated, and he got his leg blown up for it. And, you know... Now he's out of it. He's retired, essentially. Forcefully retired. But we're going to tell him with speech, your body is injured, not your mind. You're kidding yourself if you still think you're useless. <laughs> People don't exactly line up to find out what's in my head. Can't remember the last time someone suggested I knew something worth knowing. You know, maybe there's something I can do for you. Since you've gone to all the trouble of flattering a crippled old soldier, there's a move we have in the Rangers for knocking an opponent off his feet. Save my butt a bunch of times. Maybe it will for you, too. Let me show you how it's done. So, we learned a new unarm technique, the Ranger Takedown, which I've never ever actually used. Um, but, you know, we could we could do that now. He did teach us something. Really, we just needed to talk to him, though. And then I believe... Is that it? You'll get the hang of that takedown. I think that's it. Note added, check on Ranger Station Charlie. We'll do that. Raul, I think you have something to say now? What can I do for you, boss? Um, maybe? Nothing else right now. I think we have to maybe leave. Rose quest is weird because it does. Hey boss, can I ask you something? Yeah, you can. Sure, what's on your mind? What do you think of guys like Ranger Andy? Uh, I mean, I think he's a hero. He's a great guy. That wasn't what I meant, really. I mean, guys who have a world of experience doing what they do, but have to give it up because they're getting old and slow or too injured. So that Raul feels the same way, right? He is a ghoul. He's kind of like literally melting. He feels like he's not very useful anymore. So he likes to relate to people that are. So he wants my opinion about him so he can relate that opinion back to himself. Um, even after, well, I mean, there's certain options we have to say, I believe, to get certain things. Um, just because someone's crippled doesn't mean they're useless. All that experience is invaluable. Yeah, I suppose he could still teach. Take a less active role in the world. That's not so bad. Is that what you did? Would it surprise you to know that I used to be a gunslinging adventurer? I grew up in a place called Hidalgo Ranch, just outside Mexico City. It wasn't much, just a bit of a farm, with a house for three generations of Tejadas. I wasn't the best behaved kid. I was quick with my hands, with a pistol or a wrench. And I wasn't afraid to get into fights over it. I never killed anybody. But I had my share of run-ins with the police. Mostly my family kept me in line. This was before the war. We were far enough away from Mexico City when the bombs fell that we missed the worst of it. But things got bad quick. Go on. Just a few days after Mexico City was vaporized, refugees started pouring down the road to our ranch. We helped who we could, but there were so many. Eventually, my father started turning people away before we ran out of food. Things got violent. My father and I got our guns, and we drove them off. What happened then? About two dozen men came back in the night after we'd gone to sleep. They set fire to the ranch house and barred the doors from the outside. My whole family was trapped inside. I smelled the smoke, and I got myself and my little sister, Rafaela, out through a window. But everyone else, my parents, my grandmother, my two brothers, and two of my sisters, all died. What happened then? Rafael and I ran. We were pursued by some of the men who attacked our home. But I was always a good shot. The ones who came after us, I killed. The rest, I left be. I had to take care of Rafaela, not throw my life away on revenge. 
And you blame yourself for this? Maybe. I don't know. All I know is that for all my skills with a pistol, I couldn't help them. Anyway, that was weighing on my mind. Thanks for letting me get it out in the open, boss. So as we do Raul's quest here, we're going to get more and more of his backstory. So he lived outside of Mexico City on a ranch, right? Mexico City got nuked. People tried to leave Mexico City. They needed his help. They started becoming violent because he wouldn't, he couldn't offer, him and his family couldn't offer help. So somebody like Raiders fucked his shit up. And then he left with a little girl, Rafaela. And we'll learn more about the story as we do more of his quests. We have some more people to talk to. We have to go to Camp McCarran, which is here. I found it. I remember. It's the symbol with the star because it's a military thing. But I'm fucking dumb, so don't worry about me. <laughs> Hello there. You got some metal armor there, dog. It's very metal. But yeah, it's a pretty simple quest. It's a, it's going to be. I mean, this is it. We're gonna we're gonna talk to three people, and we're gonna get his whole story, and then that's it. And this is it's a simple little quest. It's, I mean, we, we did the big mountain things. We did the combat things. Now, it's about if we can find the particular ranger we need to talk to here. Uh, it is a ranger, right? Ranger Sterling is a ranger. Sergeant Bitterroot, Tennis Bay. We're, Corporal Sterling. Sorry, Corporal. I didn't mean to. Howdy. Name Sterling. First recon. Also another old man Can't say at the I've end seen of his you time. Before. I'd remember if I had. You remember everyone who passes through here? Got a good memory for faces. Landmarks and such, too. Comes with practice, that's all. A lot of scouting from place to place. Interesting rifle you have there. Lever action, right? I call her the Long Carabine. Didn't always have the scope. I added that myself. Been shooting with her so long, couldn't bring myself to toss her away. Would have felt guilty to part with the old girl. The other snipers used bolt action, but Gore Betts reckoned it didn't matter none if I was different. So long as I could hit my target. Lever action is so much cooler than bolt action, like in terms of like a. Uh... I'm fucking cool looking while doing it. How long have you always been with the first recon? Used to be a ranger. One of the first they sent out east back before we took the dam. Observation and reconnaissance. We took the lay of the land, checked out the locals, and kept ourselves inconspicuous. A couple friends of mine were the first to scout the dam. That was back in 73, if I recall. A lot of those rangers are dead now. Vegas always chewed men up. It's just a little more literal nowadays. Why'd you leave the Rangers? Well, that wasn't really a matter of choice. Got myself caught by legionaries up near Malpe. They had themselves some fun with me. Mangled my hands and feet pretty good. Wasn't much good with the pistol after that. Wasn't gonna be trekking across the waste on any more long scouts either. How'd you manage to escape? Caesar's boys figured I wasn't going anywhere after what they'd done to me. So they didn't bother tying me up. I crawled out of there on my elbows and knees. Must have looked a sight. Then I rolled down an embankment into the Colorado. I guess I had a mind to drown rather than give Caesar's boys the satisfaction of killing me. But a couple of rangers happened to be watching from across the river. They jumped on in and pulled me out of there. Lucky break, they said. Doesn't really feel lucky. Um. So yeah, he got his like probably his burned hands burned or cut or whatever, and his feet. So they didn't think he could make it. He got out anyway. How long have you been stationed here? Going on six months now, but I reckon we'll be moving out soon enough. Can't talk about the details. Military secrets and Til stuff. Till then, we'll man the towers and keep an eye on the fiends. We've had more than our share of trouble from their direction. We're gonna deal with the fiends eventually. Fiends I don't know how. Um. To me. Of course, that's just guesswork. But I still bet a few caps he's stirring up the locals against us. Could you imagine? Anyway, thank you oh. for the talk. Raul, Raul, be prompted to talk to me. Come here. Come here with your ass. Raul. Talk to you? What can I do for you? Nothing. So it's, it's, just, it's such a weird vibe. Like we've done the right thing, right? Like. Got a second. He, to now talk. he wants to talk. See, what's in your mind, Raul? Meeting Corporal Sterling. Well, you kind of got me thinking. Here's a guy that's been beat all to hell, right? I mean, he could have retired from the service, but instead he signs back on and does what he can. You think he did the right thing? I think it's good that he's so devoted to his duty, more people should act that way. He's so committed, so, like, his hands are fucked, his feet are fucked, he's still gonna try his best to help people. I think that's what, it's admirable to push through whatever. You think so, boss? Because I remember a time when a lot of people stuck to their duty no matter what. It ended with nuclear bombs falling on my hometown. 
You're talking about the Great War? What do you remember about it? After the fire, I knew my sister and I couldn't stay at El Alvo Ranch anymore. The refugees still wanted me dead. They even put a bounty on me. I remember how scared Rafaela was. I told her if she came with me, we'd see the vaquero. She used to love the rodeo, especially the trick ride. We figured maybe we could find help in Mexico City. We were young. We didn't know what had happened, really. We didn't understand about the mobs. Wasn't Mexico City basically annihilated in the Great War? I don't think it was as hard hit as D.C. or Bakersfield. But it was bad enough. By the time we got there, the city was a radioactive ruin. Still, the city was full of looters already forming into the beginnings of raider tribes. Crime was bad before the war, but now it was a nightmare. We were living like scavengers, scraping by on what little food we could find, always looking for medicine for my burns. And then, of course, the radiation started to kick in, turning me into this handsome devil you see before you. Sounds pretty bad. I mean, to be fair, it sounds, it sounds like it really sucks. It's like, it's just, my character's so... It's just like, sucks to suck, man. You're a poet of understatement, boss. But there were moments it was almost worth it. I still remember finding that novelty costume shop. I was just looking around for something I could slice up to wrap my burns when I saw the vaquero outfit hanging on the rack like it hadn't been touched. I took it, not like anybody else needed it, you know? And wore it back to our camp. Rafaela laughed. For the first time since the bombs had fallen. Wasn't it dangerous to be dressed so noticeably? It was. I started to build up a legend. Sometimes it headed off trouble. But most of the times it just started more. Young punks looking to prove themselves would come looking for me. But my eyes were sharp and my guns were quick. For a while it seemed like we might even survive there. Until... Until Rafaela. Go on, what happened to Rafaela? She went out to find some food one day. I was sick, so I stayed at her camp. I guess it must have been the beginning of radiation poison. Anyway, it was supposed to be safe, but some raiders happened to pass through where she was scavenging. I won't speak of what they did to her. When I found her body, the only way to recognize her was this funny little scar on her knee. <laughs> so fucked up, dude. A little girl. That's terrible, Raul. Terrible doesn't begin to cover it, boss. I led my whole family down. First the ranch, now Rafaela. I was the last Tejada. I guess maybe I went a little crazy then. I took my guns and went back to that market. I didn't have many bullets, but I had enough. After the raiders were dead, I salvaged what I could from the store. I was tired. I just wanted to be alone forever. So what did you do? I left Mexico City behind. I made my way out to the Gulf Coast. Eventually, I found an old Petro Chico refinery nobody had claimed. I stayed there for a little while, and I thought a lot about my life. I thought about the guns I'd lived by and what they'd gotten me. I decided my guns hadn't gotten me anything, and it was time to give it up. I took off the old vaquero outfit and put on a Petro Chico jumpsuit. The name tag said Miguel, so I started using the name myself. Eventually, I made it to Arizona. That's another story, boss. So, we'll get to the last story. We have to go all the way back up here to the Nellis Hangers. We've got to talk to Loyal. We've already talked to her before, but hopefully this still works. Um, yeah. So, Rule gave up his guns because he realized it didn't do him any good, right? It just made people... It's like the... What is it? Like the story of, like, you know... It's like the Batman conundrum of, like, Batman exists to fight crime. But because Batman exists, crime gets more intense to fight the Batman. So is Batman actually beneficial for crime, right? It, you know, like, so Raul, the gunslinger, the, the badass vaquero, going around shooting people, you know, protecting the weak and the innocent and all the so on and so forth things, killing the bad people, that creates the bad guys to escalate. They didn't like, oh, I'm going to quit because there's somebody who will get us. They're like, we have to kill the motherfucker who's doing all this shit. So he decided, is my guns and stuff all like that worth it? Is this even worth it? Should I be doing this? I'm going to give it up. I'm going to be a mechanic instead. I'm going to take the, the different name. I'm going to do different things. Now, Loyal, you better fucking be in here. I don't have a particular quest for Loyal right now, so he may not be in here. It might be hard to tell. Um, might have to pop a little weight. He could be in here. He could, but he's not right now. I'm sure. I'm pretty sure he'll be in here during the day. I just think it's a little too late at night. Um, so we're going to wait till daytime. 
like we'll just get like midday uh, it'll take a long wait i also have to go to the bathroom real quick so i'll see you guys in a little bit all right everybody i'm back successfully went to the bathroom loyal's sitting in here isn't that bomber a beauty thanks so much for making an old man's dreams come we'll see if this part works because i really needed to because he doesn't have any other dialogue no those aren't for okay and that's it i mean sometimes it works this is, might be a difficult one if we can't that's a good thing to see homies. we got it though what are you talking about that loyal guy He's getting up there in years, but he still finds a way to make himself useful to his people. If you ask me, that's better than withering away all alone or holding on to some faded piece of glory from your past. Lois using his years of knowledge to help his tribe. I think that's a noble goal. Yeah, that's what I thought too. What's on your mind? Old history, boss. I left everything when I left Mexico. My home, my family, my name, even my face. I know it's surprising, boss, but I wasn't always just handsome. As far as the world knows, I was Miguel, and I was okay with that. I headed north for a while, and ended up in Tucson. Not Tucson, by the way. Things were good there. Well, maybe not good, but better than Mexico City. I found myself a little shack and started fixing things. Fixing things? Well, sure, boss. I was always good at fixing things. Some I fixed for the town, some I fixed for other people, some I fixed just for the hell of it. It's a better way to use your hands than killing. And even then, I wasn't getting any younger or faster. I lived there for a long time, kept it myself, didn't get into any fights. Hell, the only reason I even kept my guns oil was professional pride. Why are you still there then? Getting there, boss. I'd been in Tucson. The locals can call it Tucson all they want, but it's Tucson, damn it. About 75 years when she showed up. Prettiest thing you ever saw, boss. Maybe it was just a trick of my senile brain, but I swear she looked just like my Rafaela. Her name was Claudia. She ended up taking work at one of the brothels in town. I never went to her, of course. How could I? But I looked after her in my own way. What happened with her? This was a long time ago. Before Caesar's Legion pacified Arizona and brought the Raider tribes to heel. A tribe came into Tucson one day. More a gang, really. Dirty Dave and his six brothers. They were looking for bullets. And I sold some to them. I figured if I did that, they'd leave town before they tore it up too much. But they didn't, did they? No, boss. No, they didn't. As I was saying, I hope they'd leave the town in peace. Instead, they decided to stop at Claudia's brothel to take the edge off. I don't know which one of them got rowdy first, but by the time I heard the screams and got my guns, it was too late. They shot up the brothel, killed four girls, and taken Claudia for their sport. Did you rescue her? I went after Dave and his brothers. They had a head start, but they slept nights. I didn't. It took me three days to catch up to them. Claudia was dead when I got there. They put a bullet in each of her eyes. I couldn't do anything except the venture, just like my friend. I charged into the middle of their camp and started firing. Two of them were dead before they knew I was there. The other five, though, they shot the shit out of me. I would have died, I think, if I wasn't so full of rage. How did you survive then? By being a meaner old cuss than the rest of them. Too angry to die. I wanted to keep living until they weren't. So I just kept shooting until they were. I was in pretty bad shape in the end, though. I don't know how long I laid there with the sun baking me and the buzzers chomping at me. Eventually, I got the strength to start moving. Some long time after that, I managed to drag my carcass back to town. What happened then? When I recovered, more or less anyways, I left Tucson and headed west. I ran into Tabitha at Black Mountain, and well, the rest you know. I swore I was done with the gunslinging life. I was too old, too slow, and too beat up to protect anyone anymore. I thought I was done forever. But after traveling with you, I realized I've always had my doubts. Doubts about what? About whether I'm really too old to keep living the life of a gunslinger after all. And after seeing what you go through, boss, I think I am. From now on, I'll let you deal with the fighting and stick to keeping your gear working. I don't want to slow you down more than I already do. So, 
it can go either way. You get two options here with Raul. Obviously, Raul was with Tabitha. He, he fixed the radio for her so she could have that radio broadcast in the first place. Raul is very good at fixing things. He, he does kind of, like, you, with knowing Raul's whole backstory, right? He was a gunslinger, caused him some problems. He was a repairman, still had problems anyway, needed to be the gunslinger. Technically, he should be both, but he can't, there's no option to pick both. Right now, he, after he's seeing me not do anything, I've just talked to three people, the three people he needs me to talk to, but the deal would be that, like, I think it is best that Rule tries to be a mechanic. But you can make him be a gunslinger too. I'm gonna make him be a mechanic in this particular playthrough. If that's what you think is best, I won't stop you. Thanks, boss. I'd hate to think I was disappointing you with my life-altering decision. Raul has been giving you the full maintenance perk. This replaces the regular maintenance perk, which is an even better version. And he gets a cool looking set of armor to match. So if we look here at perks, we get full maintenance, while rules the companion, the armor, condition of weapons and armor decays 75% slower. It is huge. It really is a beneficial deal. Um, I don't know if you can quite see it. I'm going to pull him out here into the light a little bit more. But he's got armor now, so he's a little bit more defensive. He still keeps a jumpsuit on. Obviously, if you make him a gunslinger, he gets the Vaquero outfit on. But he's still, he's still got a gun. He's still fighting combat and stuff. Um, unfortunately, Raul, what can I do for you, boss? companions are cheating, so you're going to have to go on without you. Good call. I mean, if that's what you really want. I think it's for the best. That's why you're the boss. You always make the right decision. I'll just head home. Home to my lonely abandoned shack. In the middle of nowhere. Raul is so sad, dude. It's so sad, man. Oh my god. I just don't... Oh. I don't... Like, it's cheating. I mean, obviously, the main, the main benefit of that... It's not it's not cheating. It's just it makes combat too easy. I don't want to be the, like Raul have a bunch of... Raul would be a companion to take, though. Especially with that full maintenance perk on. He's really just there to keep my weapons going. Right? He's not... I mean, he's going to shoot some people, though. And that does make the game somewhat easier. I like to handle the combat myself. We do have a quest to turn into the Brotherhood of Steel. We did that today, too. Did all of the Black Mountain things. Handled the crazy, crazy, crazy. Handled all of Raul's quests today. Completed that stuff. And now we're going to finish the Brotherhood of Steel quest, which is Eyesight to the Blind. That's right. Now they have access. They were blind underground here in their little bunker. And now they have access to the ability to see what the above world is doing thanks to Black Mountain. A few of us wanted to thank you for being such a good friend to the Brotherhood. So we've set aside some of our recycled energy cells. We'll leave a few of them in that footlocker in the corner every so often. The Paladins scoff at using recycled ammo so no one should mind. Um, recycled ammo is the good shit. I mean, there's a big chunk of electron chargebacks. That's okay. I don't know why you wouldn't want to use recycled ammo. That's like essentially all I use. And then I optimize it. Just make it better. You guys are the Brotherhood of Steel. You're supposed to be good at these kind of things. Apparently not. You know, that's okay. They're allowed to be, you know, generally... Like, hoard all the technology but not be very good at maintaining it type of thing. But, uh, Elder. I was going to say Maxon. It's not Max in this game. That's a bad thing. Um... <laughs> Elder McNamara, that's right. Greetings, my friend. I hope I can be of some assistance to you. I installed the device of a Black Mountain, as instructed. Yes, we've already started receiving telemetry from it. This will be a great help in our future efforts, and I thank you. Now then, it is my great honor to bestow upon you the title of Paladin of the Brotherhood for meritorious service above and beyond the Call of Duty. I'm afraid Call of Duty. a formal ceremony was out of the question, given our current state. But I hope this will make up for it. I had the knights refurbish a suit of our power armor for your use. It's one of the earlier models, but it should serve you well. Now I suppose I'm going to have to show you how to use it, aren't I? Back in the day, in these old Fallout games where they had to teach you how to use power armor for you to use power armor. Please do! First, let's go over how to put it on. We kind of skip over it. We learn how to use power armor. We get power armor training. We're officially a paladin of the Brotherhood of Steel. I think you've got the knack of it now. You should now be able to wear any kind of power armor you come across. I've also given the order that all of our equipment be made available to you, not just the more mundane arms. You're a member of the Brotherhood now, and your gear should reflect that. Lastly, you will be allowed to come and go as you please. You've done so much for us that to do otherwise would be a crime. I just ask that you keep the Brotherhood's interests at heart in all your dealings. Remember, that you will always have a home. This is gonna be fucked up later! Um, but we completed the quest. Um, Eyesight to the Blind is now complete. The Brotherhood is done. Hello, Harden. McNamara gets to be Elder. I get to be here. I'm 
I got power armor on me, right? Like it is, it is what it is. It's not even—they don't even not very good condition power armor, right? It is making us extremely heavy, um, as a thing too. Just unfortunate, right? It is what it, I don't know if we're gonna be able to gain enough. We, we're like 20 pounds down, dude. Like it's a lot. That's a lot of. That's a lot of weight to have to try to. The power armor and helmet can go into that. That's crazy. We're still 15 pounds down though. I, I mean, I don't really even need the power armor to be fair. That's not like an important thing to me at all. At all. Um, I guess we'll just drop it. It's not even worth anything. Get the fuck out of my inventory power armor. I mean, I don't think we're really gonna come back. There is there is some cool features of that. Like, we obviously are trained in power armor. I'm not gonna wear power armor. Light armor for life, baby. Um, but also, we get those energy ammo once a day, right? I think it's once a day anyway, at the front gate. But it's just a little too Amazing. inconvenient to fast travel in. And I know there's a vendor over here, and they would sell stuff to us before. I think, is it over here? I think it's over here. I'm like bad at remembering where things are. This is the gun range. Is this where the vendor's at? Over in here? Yeah, this is the vendor here. Have you heard the news? Elder McNamara has lifted the lockdown. Good news for this though. Let me tell you, I can't wait to start getting more goods. So what do you? So we anything you have for sale. So patrols are always bringing more stuff we have in. we have better yeah. stuff we can get now. We can get Gauss rifles, Grease Lightning, which is a very cool, very fast attacking power fist that we, we're not going to use, but we could. Plasma Defender, Thermic Lance, that's kind of a cool thing. Tribune Laser Rifle, very interesting things, right, that we could technically get here. Um, Gauss Rifle's kind of nuts. Gatling Laser, right, Fat Man, Reinforced Combat Armor. We could buy power armor, we could, you know, buy all this ammo and stuff, I mean... Not that we really need ammo. I really just want to sell some things. I mean, that's all my money, though, and that's all your money. So it's not like we get. I guess we could buy some ammo just to say we did. But I don't know what good that does me even anyway. You don't even have any energy ammo to buy, and all this armor is too heavy. We could buy the Gauss rifle, I guess. Say we did. Do you have anything else to sell? I mean, we don't really need frag mines. There we go. We'll just we'll just call that good. Just get rid of that out of the inventory. Not really been using mines anyway. And technically, we could just use the, the Gauss Rifle to fix our laser rifle, um, or our lair, right? Gauss Rifle still goes into that, too. Technically, I think the Gauss Rifle is, like, better per shot damage, right? I guess its DPS is technically better, too, than the lair. Um, the lair's got swag points, though, so this is a Gauss Rifle. We can put those optimized in there. It does shoot five shots at once, though. It's literally a firing range. What do you mean, cut it out, will you? It's got a scope. Makes it very accurate to shoot, but you know, it's one shot reload, one shot reload. I guess we can keep it just in case. I'm gonna put it like down there. It's so hard for me to do the the diagonals. I talked about this before. So we have the Tesla cannon here. This thing. That thing. Laser rifle. Lair. Too many guns. We have way too many guns. But yeah, I think that's going to be pretty much it for this episode, you guys. I, I know it was not like a, a monumental one, but we finished the Brotherhood of Quest, Brotherhood of Steel quest. We became a Brotherhood Paladin. We got a Gauss Rifle now, I guess. That is kind of interesting, at least. I mean, maybe we can go shoot something with it just to say we did. Um, and we get energy ammo here all the time. But we finished the Brotherhood Quest. We finished Rallo's Quest. There's some energy cells. That thing does replenish ammo. It is worth doing. I mean, like, thinking about it now, I probably didn't need to kill Cass, but, you know, we did. My daughter hates me for that too. I just want to mention that. She like absolutely holds that against me forever that I am a bad person. That's how strong her morality is though. You didn't kill people in the video game. I get it. Okay, I get it. I understand now. Um, Gauss Rifle cool though. Weapons in general are cool. We're very good like kitted. We're not worried about anything else. There's another Gauss Rifle here. We can I guess throw the Gauss Rifle in my Gauss Rifle. It's technically a broken Gauss Rifle but I believe we can repair with it anyway. Yeah, it does still repair the Gauss Rifle we had here. A little bit of a better condition. I don't think we have anything to shoot. Um, at all, but you know, we're here. Those bark scorpions are dead, so it is what it is. Yeah, I don't know what we're doing next time, though. I mean, like I said, you guys have to let me know if you want me to do the dead money DLC. Um, how many Sunset Sarsaparilla Star bottle caps do we have? We could do those, we could do that quest maybe next time. That's something we could do, right? 25 still, so. we'd have to go get five more, go out and get that. Um, we still can finish Wang Dang Atomic Tango. We gotta go talk to Mr. House still. We could go to Booted. We could start fucking with the Legion. Just fuck the Legion. Um, obviously, Sierra and Major Ground opening. The Legend of the Star. That's really it that we got for Quest. I mean, on us. We still have to do Helios 1. We could do Helios 1 as its own fucking thing. Um, there's some Bark Scorpions over here. 
Take a little crouch here. I, I know this is a big waste of ammo, but I missed it anyway. At least it has a scope. That's dead. Like, this is a great... Gauss rifle, great, right? Like, it is a good weapon, for sure. The scope is really cool. I don't even know if there's, like, a unique Gauss rifle in the game. There must be, right? Yeah, I mean, that fucking fries things, right? Like, it definitely is big damage. More scorpions this way? There is. It's just an absolute waste of ammo, though. That one's stuck in a thing. You stuck, dog? You gonna come get me? Jesus Christ, you shoot the gun. All the bark scorpions in the world. I forgot, that makes me go boom. <laughs> I blew my fucking self up. What a waste of fucking... I'm so dumb, you guys. Hey, well, we could pop more sarsaparillas, right? Do we have sarsaparilla to drink? Yeah, there's nine of them. Like, fuck it, throw some of those in there. It just doesn't. This is what a worthless piece of shit gun. Lair. Lair's probably, like I said, Lair's probably my favorite energy weapon in the game. But I don't know what we're doing next time. You guys, I mean, by the time you guys would even be able to leave a comment on this particular video, I probably have already made the next video. I'll make a decision somewhere along the way. I will make a decision. I mean, kill mutated insects. We're getting that up there. That's something. Um, kill some bark scorpions. All different kinds of guns here that we got <laughs> working it out. But yeah, I mean, I think maybe we'll do... Helios 1, which is like right over here. Maybe we'll fast over here. Maybe we'll do Helios 1 next time. I'll think about it. I don't even know how I'm handling Helios 1. I don't even know what I'm doing, for sure. We'll see what happens. I'll be here for next time. We'll see what happens as I get there. If you guys have enjoyed my Fallen New Vegas playthrough so far, and you know, especially this episode, make sure to leave a like rating down below. It does let me know that you, somebody's watching the series and actually enjoying it and wants to see more of it. Appreciate that a lot. If you guys haven't already, make sure to subscribe that we can check out more videos from me, including the rest of my playthrough that I make, or the rest of that I already did. The easiest way to check out all those videos is by subscribing. Leave a comment down below, let me know what you think of Raul, because that's a big focus of this particular video. And pretty much other than that, you guys have a good rest of your day. Run it to my B, and I will see you in the next episode.